Hi, I'm Nasreen, uh, the owner of Naya Papery from Tunisia, and you're watching Etsy Shop Audit. We're sitting on a really good thing and you're not taking advantage of it. And it's not your fault. It's just like, there's a lot of people, they just get so busy in their business and they don't take advantage of an asset like an email list. Your email list is probably a hundred thousand dollars in sales waiting to be had. Okay. All right, Nazreen. So we are going to start your Etsy shop audit now. And, uh, we're going to kind of just do a little review here of what you gave us when you did the, uh, the intake. And uh, so basically it's Naya Papery um, yes. shop is, uh, has been open. I believe you said 2012 or 14, but you really didn't start working on it until like 2016, correct? Yes. yes. Okay. Right. Okay, cool. Um, the niche, you have stationary planning addicts and leather lovers. Um, so we'll go ahead and we'll explore. And I know you gave a little bit more detail, but I didn't have enough room to fit it in here. So we'll, we'll yeah. talk about that. Um, okay. And then sticking point, you weren't really sure um, like what we meant, but maybe like what it was. So really the sticking point is just like, and we'll get to that is like, what's like your biggest, you know, obstacle, like what's preventing you from growing. Um, so that's something that we want to dig into. So maybe you can, um, help us out with that here, um, as we go through this. Um, and then total revenue, I have here 11,638 sales, um, yeah. which is impressive. Um, so we'll dig into that. And your income goal was $10,000 per month. Um, so we're like looking at like 120 for the year. Is that accurate? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, cool. Um, and then, yeah, I think I actually have some, some slides here that you, uh, that you gave me. So, um, so that's in euros, correct? Yeah. So I yeah. went ahead and did a little calculation here. So in us dollars, it's like $215,552, which is pretty impressive. Um, and a lot of views, a lot of visits. Um, and then that there was for the last 30 days yeah. and let's see here. And then here we have, this looks like this is for your ads, which we'll dive into. And then, uh, this looks like this is for, um, some more ad stuff. Um, I think that was from this year. That's for this yeah. year. So, okay, cool. Months, basically. Yeah. All right, cool. So let's, let's go ahead and let's, let's kind of dig in. So I guess the first question that I have for you is like, what is the biggest sticking point? Like, what are you hoping to get from this Etsy shop audit? Uh, well, to be honest, to understand what's going, I don't want to say wrong, but I know there is something that I'm not doing correctly because I do have uh, a standalone website okay. that's driving most of the sales. And well, the goal is to have about the same thing as we have on the website, but on Etsy. I started on Etsy and opened the website in 2018, I think. Um, yeah, I think at the end of 2000, 2018. Um, so uh, now, well, most of the traffic is coming from social media and well, I let uh, the Etsy shop die a bit. Okay. But then I was like, that's stupid because <laughs> we can drive maybe new customer that doesn't know us from social media or the planning community. Uh, and that might be interested in maybe other things than just leather covers because well, we do have our, I work with my husband and we do have our own workshop. Um, so everything is made in house and we basically can do pretty much anything you're going to make with leather, uh, except for shoes and clothes because okay. that's a totally different, hmm. um, hmm. like, uh, machines and, uh, just another way of doing things, but everything else we can do. Okay. So would you, so then are, are you saying like your sticking point then here would be more of like, how do you revive or how do you get more from Etsy? Um, yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Let, let me ask you, though, Chris, I know you wanted to ask uh, something yeah, that are, I'll let you go first. Cause I've got some questions too. Okay. So I, I'm just trying to clarify. So the, the 120,000 or the 10,000 a month, that's just what we want on Etsy because that's about yes. what we have on the website currently. Right. So exactly. we're not counting that. You already have that coming in. Yeah. Awesome. That's information that we can use. Right. Okay. And so the, the question is, how do we scale this so that it's bringing in people we don't already have? Right? Exactly. 
Okay. Okay. Um, so where, okay, let, let's, let's start here. Um, so, and again, that's very impressive that your website is doing well. And now you're just adding this as another channel. I, I like that. A lot of people starting on Etsy and then they want to wait to do the outside channel and you're doing it um, the other way, which actually we just had someone on that did the exact same thing. Um, so then I would say your traffic, where is that coming from primarily that's going to your website? Uh, I would say Instagram. Instagram. Yeah. Instagram and Facebook. Out of the two, what ones do you think is is more? Uh, Instagram, for Instagram. sure. Okay. Um, and then through the, so driving people from Instagram, going over to your shop, what kind of content in, are you posting and what kind of content, um, what's your schedule look like for that? Uh, well, I, I'm really bad at this, to be honest. Uh, I'm, I'm working on posting more. Uh, I post almost every day, but in story. So okay. that's like whatever I'm working on or posting like people orders or pretty much, uh, whatever, okay. whatever I can post, whatever I can show. And yeah, I'm I'm struggling with videos and reels. That that's uh, that's really uh, an issue for me making videos. Uh, so I'm um, I'm trying and um, I'm not really succeeding at this. Are, so I post more pictures. Is your but I'm, I'm is not your consistent. In, okay, is, is your Instagram easy? stuff though educational or is it just showing off your products? Um. Well, not really educational. And I think that's the main issue because I talk to people that already know us, are part of the planning community okay. and not newbies. And that might be an error, actually. Um, okay. Maybe. Yeah. Or maybe yeah. it's process, right? And, and I'm looking at your Instagram, uh, which I believe it's your Instagram because it's the same name as as your other stuff. Yeah, they up, should be only stuff. one. <laughs> uh, I'm going to pull that up. And what I'm seeing here, and again, I think what you said is you're posting mostly in stories right now, which yeah. is only going to go to the people who already know who we are. But looking at yeah. this, right, even showing leatherworking is something that would stand out to anybody yeah. that sees this coming through the feed. And even if they don't want to do leatherworking themselves, it's something they could purchase from you as a finished product. So yeah. just, just something to keep in mind. There's nothing wrong with showing the process. What we don't just want to do is show just a, a flat picture of a leather journal, right? But if you show the process or you show the inside, then that becomes a little bit more engaging content. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. So Absolutely. like, okay. So my main thing I want to ask you is mm -hmm. what are, what are we doing to build an email list from the Instagram people? I have no idea. Okay, good. You've come to the right place. Um, <laughs> cause that is our specialty. Um, yeah. and you know, so like Instagram, like, so let me ask you this. Yeah. What would happen to your business if your Instagram account got shut down tomorrow? Well, I do have a Facebook group where okay. like, um, my really regular customers are in. Okay. Uh, so I don't, I would don't it hurt the me. business? Maybe, or okay. maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But not as much as someone who uh, maybe isn't known as much as me, because I like in that specific niche, in that specific community. Uh, mm -hmm. And when I see the traffic, uh, uh, the stats on the website, a lot of people, are like they come first from Instagram, but then they come from Google. So they just type in the the website. Right, but they came from Instagram. So all I'm saying is like, if you lost Instagram, yes, no, the, pe yeah. the people that you already have like created a relationship with, they're gonna they're gonna be like, oh, I want to go over and check check out what she's doing or what they're making or what they're up to. But Instagram is kind of like the thing that sets it in motion. Yeah. Yes. So like. I guess what my, my point is this, and, and the thing is, is like, and I'm not saying like, don't do Instagram cause it's working for you, but all, all I'm okay. saying is like, wouldn't it be nice to be able to write an email and reach probably 30 to 40% of what you're reaching now? And, 
And what I mean by that is, is like, if you have, and I, I didn't look at your follower account, but let's just say you have 10,000 people, yeah. like how many of those people are actually engaged, you know, or if we have an email list, now what we can do is we can take some of that traffic and we can direct it to the website or we can direct it to our Etsy shop and start to really accelerate sale growth there. So yeah. my personal thing is like, I'd be probably focusing on that because that's going to serve your website and it's going to serve Etsy. Um, and it's going to also, it's going to take you off the hamster wheel of having to feel like I have to post on Instagram. I have to post on Facebook or whatever. Um, I would like you to see you have a schedule of like, I post once on Instagram a day. I post once on Facebook and I send one email three times a week. And oh, that's wow. your, that, that's your traffic. Like, that's it. Like, that's all you got to focus on. Um, so okay. I think to do that, I would want you to do like a giveaway for mm -hmm. some of your products. And then I would advertise, not even advertise. I would let people know on Instagram that you're doing this thing. Okay. And that's going to help accelerate your follower count because now also part of that thank you page is going to say, Hey, get more entries by, you know, uh, whatever, sharing, uh, us on Instagram or sharing us on Facebook or liking our, or joining our Facebook group. And you're getting all of these additional entries and it's spreading the word for you. Um, so you're growing all aspects of it, of running the giveaway. Um, we're a huge fan of it. Um, and from that, you're getting the email address. Yeah. Right. You're getting now, how many people would you say are joining your Facebook group a day, a week, a month? Like, do you have those numbers? About, I would say about 20 people a month. Okay. Maybe not, not that much. Okay. So it's small. We do send emails already because I have an email list from the website. Okay. So you I, have, those are customers, which is great. Exactly. Okay. okay. They're all customers. How many are on that list right now? Around six, six point five thousand. Oh wow! Okay, fantastic. And five and five hundred. Okay, six. how many um, emails are you sending out a week? Oh, I send maybe. I would say, not not more than two a month. <laughs> okay. There, Usually one, one a month. That's going to be your homework assignment. You know that's coming. Okay. That's, that's going to okay. be homework. Okay. Um, I, I literally want you to do what we're, uh, we're going to probably share with you. Cause I have a feeling that it's, it's going to happen that we're going to share this. Um, okay. if you do, I want you to report back what happened. Okay. Cause it'll be a great case study for us. I mean, heck you're going to make sales. If you got 6,500, these are customers. Yes. Oh my. Chris, um, we got to yeah, may, may remember a story. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Scott may remember a story about me nearly flipping a table um, <laughs> in a coffee shop because in the, the early days of the podcast, somebody came to us and they said, oh, yeah, you know, I have I only have 100,000 emails. And I was like, how often do you email them? And they were like, never. And I was like, OK, uh, can we send them an email, please? And she's yeah. like, but I don't want them to unsubscribe. Right. Yeah. I was like, they're unsubscribed and went on a rant in the middle of the coffee house and got everybody really lit up and fired up. Right. But I think for us one of the biggest fears that people have is that they're going to over email people. And as a result, they massively under email. people. We have 6,500 customers. Those are people who have already bought our stuff. You have said your customers love your stuff. Your stuff is really cool. Just based on what we've seen yeah. looking at the Instagram just now, before we even dive into yeah, it, we haven't even opened up so, the Etsy shop, which is amazing. I already looked at it. So we have 6,500 people who have already raised their hands at least once. And I guarantee you a good portion of those people have raised it three, four, five, six times in the past, yeah. right? And our job now is to put new cool things in front of them to get them to keep buying from us, to give them the opportunity to do it. Yeah, Existing customers not only buy more, but they spend. It doesn't cost us anything to acquire them. We already have them. They've already paid us and they buy more and they spend usually 30% more right? Than getting a new customer. So if we can focus on growing that list of 6,500 people and growing the sales, if we're driving them to Etsy, cool. If we're driving them to the website, awesome, right? It doesn't matter where we're sending that traffic. Yeah. It's going to result in more orders, more revenue for the business and higher margins because we're selling more in fewer orders. So our shipping costs go down. Our discounts don't have to be as aggressive or any of those kinds of things, right? We need to email that list as much as possible. And if I were you, if you handed me the keys to your business, 
the very first thing I would be doing is sitting down and Scott, I think you know where I'm going with this because it's probably the same place you were going with this. And I would do what we refer to as a four day profit push, right? We're going to send a limited promotion, four emails over a few days, uh, four, five, five emails over a few days and just go from there, right? We're gonna promote one or two things or maybe a collection depending on how your store is set up. And we'll see that here in just a minute. We give a okay. definite timeline and a little bit of a discount. We say, go get it. And you will see a large spike in sales from that list, especially because it's an existing customer list. Yeah. H have you run any like dedicated promos? Uh, yes, yes. I, I How do does that. it do for you? How does it do? I do it only mostly on the on the website, to be honest. Okay. Um, but how, how does it how does it convert for sales? Uh, well, mm, pretty good, I would say, but not as much as I would expect. So okay. I'm wondering maybe uh, it's like the leather range we have at that time, or maybe it's not like the best time of the month or mm -hmm. I don't know. To be honest, I, I have no idea. And well, this is why I'm here today. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, so when, um, go ahead. When Kurt. you run a promo, Nesreen, yeah. walk us through that process. So we're going to run a promotion this weekend. What okay. does that look like? How would you email your list? Like, what are you doing right now to promote that promotion? Yeah. Okay. So I had one uh, last week. Uh, I I I have a, a special sale on the Sunday, uh, the last Sunday of the month. Okay. Uh, on all the ready to ship items um, we have. So that's so, something I do. How many emails did you send to that? Just one. Okay. With with the code and okay. like. Okay. And can it you, was can you forward us day. can you forward us that email um and, and we, we can look at it later um we may need to do a follow up with you cuz um i think we're sitting on a little bit of a gold mine right now that i, I i'm okay. kind of getting a little a little itchy just cuz i'm like we're sitting <laughs> on a really good thing and you're not taking advantage of it and it's not your fault it's just like there's a lot of people they just get so busy in their business and they don't take advantage of an asset like an email list um, and I think like, what, what was your, what was your number? You wanted to add a hundred and a hundred thousand or 120,000 or something like that to your Etsy, you know, Etsy sales. But I think you would agree. You don't care where the sales come from. You just want $120,000, right? Like you want to make an extra 120,000, like who doesn't, right? You right. probably can do that Wait. with just using your email list over the next 12 months. Okay. Wow. Yeah. You can literally like your email list is probably a hundred thousand dollars in sales waiting to be had. Hey, real quick. I wanted to give you a little behind the scenes on how these Etsy shop audits even happen. Every single month, Chris Schaefer and I, we meet and we batch record three to four of these episodes. Then they get edited and they get posted like the one you're watching right now. But what we decided to do is create what we call our Backstage Pass Club. This is where all of our club members, they get to join us on that recording as we're doing it live. The other cool thing is you're able to ask questions and you also can get access to the recordings before they ever air immediately, raw and unedited. You even get all the questions that were asked that you might have missed because, well, maybe you couldn't attend that one live. So if you'd like to be part of our Backstage Pass Club and join our next batch recording session, head on over to brandcreators.com forward slash club or click the link in the description. Now let's get back to the audit. Okay. Yeah. So oh. that, that's how much I believe in email if it's done properly. Um, now that's your customer list. I would also say that I would want you to be actively building the email list of not just customers. Um, do you have anything on your website that's like, um, you know, get 10% off your first order when you sign up to our email list or something like that? I think I do. Yes. Okay. I think I did that. Okay. Yeah. If yeah. not, we okay. definitely want that in place um, where, um, you know, people come to the site. Maybe there's a pop-up that comes up and says, hey, new here, you know, take 10% or 20% off your first order when you join our I email list. 
I, I don't have a pop up because I usually hate them myself. Okay. <laughs> so I have I have that like at the bottom of the website. Mm, see, yeah. uh, you don't you don't like them, but other people use them a lot. Um. So right. okay. So is it, this is it here? Okay. Yeah. So this yeah. this is a pop up. They just yeah. call it a slide in module or yeah. whatever, right? It's yeah. a less obtrusive pop up. Yeah. But it's also a very generic offer, right? Sign up for our newsletter. People don't know what that means and it yeah. doesn't give them a reason to do it. If we turn this into save 10% on your first order or Scott's favorite thing for Etsy, join our VIP club, right? Oh. And get deals and discounts whenever they're available. We're going to get a lot more people to sign up for this. Yeah. Even yeah. if we okay. just leave it this way. I'd look at bringing in a pop-up pop-up, even if it only shows in you know, the first time they come to the website, right? Because we want to take advantage of whatever traffic is coming to the site. We want to try to capture that. If they come to our site and they don't buy right away, it does us absolutely no good, right? That traffic just disappears into the wind. If we can get the, the offer in front of them, something that gets them to convert, whether it's a discount or sign up for future discounts or sign up for our giveaway that's going on, right? Any of those kinds of things, we have a much higher chance of turning that random person into an email subscriber and therefore into a buyer in the future. Yeah. So, and again, like we just, we just taught this in, in our, the one day email list building class, which is our giveaway model. It's, it's what we've been doing for years and we we've done it in e-commerce. We've done it in digital products. We've done it everywhere. And it just works because it builds a list of the right people. And so you've already got people that are on Instagram that yes, they might go, Oh, I forgot the website and they'll Google your name or whatever. But they're actively having to do that. Wouldn't it be nice to just show up in their inbox on a regular basis? So this way here, they're like, oh, because they're, maybe they're not on Instagram that day, or maybe they only checked it in the morning and they didn't see it or whatever. Um, that gives them the nudge to go check out your stuff. Um, and the reason, I mean, think about the big brands. Like I, I'm I'm a, a big supporter right now of like this one. Uh, it's no, no bull, right? It's basically a new, they sell sneakers and workout stuff. Um, but I just got something the other day on my phone and in an email that basically said 48 hour special and I'm getting, I'm getting hit with them. And I'm like, I said to my wife, Hey, you want to pick out any shoes? They're giving 30 bucks off this week, 48 hours. And she's looking through it and I'm looking through it. I'm like, uh, and, and you know, what? I think today's the last day. So I got to make my decision. Right. But they're sending me at least five to six messages in that 48 hour window. That's and they're going to, they're going to crush that sale. Okay. And I'm okay with it. I'm not like, no bulls email me again. I'm so pissed off at them guys because they're emailing me. I'm not, I don't care. I like the brand. I wear the hat. You know, it's like I I I love their stuff. So if people really love your stuff, and if they don't, they're gonna unsubscribe. Um, but you said something really important. You don't like pop-ups, so that's why you don't put them on your website. And I've heard that so many times, but there's a way to do it where it's not annoying, where it could pop up. And like Chris said, then you can set it to not show if they come back to the website again. So they're not being constantly annoyed. And it's not one of those ones that comes up and it's like, boom, you know, like hammers you. It can just come up and it just lightly goes. And then it's like the background grays out and then you can just X off of it. It's pretty much any, any e-commerce brand yeah. has that now. And it's generally going to be, um, sign or, you know, um, Sign up to get 10% off your first order. It's always that, or it's 20% off your first order. It's something of a discount, not just our newsletter. No one cares about newsletter. They don't know what that means. Um, so I, I know this is all Etsy shop audit. We haven't even looked at the Etsy shop yet, but man, I got so excited on that. I'm still excited because I know that you're going to crush this. Um, and I, I want to help you do that. And Chris wants to help you do that. Let's look at the Etsy shop, Chris. Let's pull up that why we're here. I mean, we might as well pull up the Etsy shop. Um, and then well, from well there, I'm I do want to walk through um, what I would want you to do if I had control of your email list. And we can kind of put together a plan on how to do that. And also what you should be doing in the future on a regular yeah. basis um, to use that email list to help Etsy grow and help your your uh, website grow and, and all of that stuff. Um, Chris, so can you pull that up? Yeah, while, while I'm doing that, I saw Nisreen, you made a really interesting, cool face when Scott said five or six emails in 48 hours. And then you either said it or just mouthed the words, that's a lot. Yeah. It sounds like a lot until you consider the fact that most email lists, you're going to get somewhere between a 20 and 30% open rate. And even yeah. if you got a 30% open rate on all of those emails, the chances that someone opened 
every single one of those emails is very, very slim. Right. Yeah. And so you can also do resends to people who didn't open. Right. There's a lot of ways to limit your exposure and still maximize the upside. People are afraid to over email. How you will know you will over email is when you get 100 people emailing you from your list of 6,500 people going, whoa. And there's a lot of ways to mitigate that. And if you, I'm sure Scott will get into this about how we treat the last few emails in that campaign and say, hey, like we're, we're going to stop bothering you now, but we wanted to make sure you don't miss out. You lose substantially more when you under email than when you over email, okay. yeah. right? So you don't have to send six in 48 hours. That is fairly aggressive. But yeah. if you are that aggressive, you get the most out of it, right? Because you're constantly back in front of people. So Scott, I'm going to pull up the Etsy shop here. And I think, I think this is one you're going to like. So, I mean, like my first impression, and I did take a quick peek at this, um, in the very beginning, like your banner is perfect. Like it shows everything it's, it's classy looking. It, it just looks great. That's, that's all I can say. So, I mean, it, it's very clean. Um, you've got good sales history. You've got a five-star rating. You've got a picture of you. So it uh, checks all my boxes. Like everything looks clean. Okay. Awesome. Um, images here look great. Um, you have free shipping. So that stands out. Um, I do like that. Um, yeah, and I'm just kind of just thumbing through here. You got it's all categorized on the left hand side very well, neat, organized. Like, so this is like a mini website, is the way I look at it. It's like a mini style website, and you've put it together very well. Your color, this is the one thing that I I wish I wish there was some way to, to convey it to people, but like your colors are so on brand for you. Yeah. Like, you know, I think it's like your colors, it's like you have a color palette and you're sticking with that. So when I'm looking at this, it just looks good natural. Um, I'm getting the feel of, I know what type of brand this is like right away. Um, and it looks super clean. What are those leather personalized magnets? Uh, these are magnetic bookmarks. You can, oh, cool. use, yeah, you can use them like as bookmarks. You can, uh, use them as a cable holders. As okay. well. Uh, they can be Look useful. I like them. Yeah, that's cool. To put cash in your pocket, for example. Oh, that works okay. with it what, too. Um, what would you say here in your Etsy shop was your best seller or sellers? Uh, the magnetic bookmarks are working uh, pretty pretty well. Okay. Um, and uh, the binders as well. Okay. Uh, the, um, I put the like the the four best seller sellers uh on the top they okay. are on the top yes on the top okay. and i need to remove the pictures but these are the best sellers okay um yeah these i mean it looks it looks really good so what do you think is like who's searching who's searching for this like personalized ring binder planner so is it someone that's just searching for a ring binder uh planner or is there a certain I'm just curious, and you probably already kind of have that dialed in because you're getting sales. Yes, yes, um, mostly they a lot of customers. Well, instead of buying shoes and bags, they buy binders and leather covers, and they change according to the season or their mood or whatever. It. Okay, that's that's the so. This yeah, is what I. I <laughs> I don't, I don't see like a ton here that you need to do as far as like, like optimization looks pretty good from what I can see. You seems like, you know, your target market, you know, who you're targeting. Um, the biggest thing is getting more traffic here. Are you advertising anything with Etsy ads? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, I'm on my phone right now, but I let me go just check. I have the computer next to me. Okay. Let me check. Which ones I advertise? I think three or four only. Um, okay. So not much. And are they your best sellers? Mostly the best sellers. Yes. Okay. Good. So again, I want people watching to understand like your average. You're doing exactly what we've said to do, right? You're finding the three to five products that are bringing in traffic. And then you're going to advertise those. That's what you're putting the money on, which I like it. 
So there's not much we have to really say there. It sounds like your biggest thing right now is how do you get more traffic and whether that's not even necessarily more traffic here, how do you get more sales off of Etsy? And I don't think it's necessarily doing anything internally with Etsy. Although we could look at it and say, do you have your internal triggers set up inside of, of um, your Etsy account? You know, where if someone favorites something that they would get emailed a, a possible coupon, do you have that, yes. right? What about yes. abandoned carts? Do you have that set up? Yes. Okay. Do you have, you, so you have all those things set up, right? So there's not much more you're going to do there. But what you can do is you can build your email list and you can take your existing email list and you can drive them here. And the only reason I would drive them here versus your website is if I was either launching a product on here that I wanted to get ranked mm -hmm. or I wanted to take an existing product and make sure that I kept the rank. Okay. And, and that's the only reason why I would do that. The other cool thing is, is like when you're doing that, you can also in your email, you can say, Hey guys, uh, just want to let you know, we're launching, um, this product on Etsy and over the next three days, four days, we're running a launch special because we want to get some reviews on there and we would love it if you would help us out with that and give us some feedback. So go here to get your 20% discount for the next, you know, 48 hours or whatever. And then you're just driving people there and you're not going to send one email on that. You're going to probably send four. Okay? okay. And that right there is going to spike your sales on Etsy. It's going to also increase your ranking on Etsy very quickly when your competition's like, how is she doing that? And you're like, well, I got this little thing over here called an email list and I'm sending out emails. You don't know about that. Um, so that's the huge advantage. So, I mean, I think that's the big aha that I, I have right here is like, oh my gosh, like I didn't know we were sitting on an email list of customers, which that's a whole nother animal. It's not like they're just people that might buy. Um, these are customers. So um, I think what I would like you to do, and again, like, I don't think it's really even worth our time to look at your Etsy shop and try to squeak a few things, you know, out, you know, like tweak a thing, squeak a few extra sales here and there because we're going to optimize. I, I think it's all about you leveraging the email address. The only thing that I think that, and I don't know, maybe you are doing this. Are you collecting emails or trying to collect emails of the customers that are coming from Etsy? Um, well, I put actually uh, the um, the address of on the banner of okay. the website. I think it's on the banner, and on pretty much every listing, there is okay. the link of the website. Okay, so, Chris, go go back to that real quick. I want to see the banner, and I, I also want to see a listing, and I want to see where this stuff is located. I changed the banner recently, so I don't even know okay. if I it uh, on the banner, but I there is. It is in the description of most of the uh, of the listing. I'm still working, okay. uh, redoing photos, adding and, videos for each and listing. And so, is that just going to your website, or is that going to a landing page that has a place to opt in for something? Uh, just on the on the homepage of the website. Okay, so it was the it was the homepage that said join our newsletter. Yes. Okay. Yeah. It's so there. Okay. So you have your website there. But what yeah. I'm saying is, is like, we're not really giving them a real reason to go give you their email address. So what I mean by that is like, join our VIP club, join our VIP, whatever you want to call it. And then you would literally buy a domain name that would be pointed to your landing page. And I mean, a landing page that is just saying like, get 10 or 20% off your first order when you join our VIP list, right? Or um, you know, join our VIP list for exclusive deals and, and, uh, you know, uh, future giveaways or, you know, free giveaways or something like that, that gives them a reason to go, Oh, cool. I love this brand name and email address submit. They immediately go to a thank you page. And on that thank you page, it says, thank you. Here's your discount coupon or here's, you know, the link to go get your thing. Um, and that's it. And so and you can literally like create that landing page, but then you can just buy a domain name that would be like, uh, you know, whatever, uh, whatever the, whatever you would want it to be. It could be, um, the brand name and then just VIP.com at the end. Um, okay. and then you would just point them to that. But my, even outside of that, like that, all that stuff, like you're going to gain some emails, not like 
a crazy amount, but you're going to gain some, but where you will want to do this, and this would be like my priority number one would be in that message that gets sent out by you in your Etsy account. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's that one, that one message that we all can, we can alter, like, like we can, we can change. Yeah. Um, inside of that, it would be like, you know, Hey, it's Nezrine. I just wanted to you just let you know, we got your order. We're putting the order together. It should be shipped shortly. Um, I also want to take a minute to invite you to our VIP club where you get exclusive discounts, da, 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 right. And then you put that URL right in that message. Okay. They're a customer and they're one click away to giving you their email address. And that's totally legal within Etsy. You don't have to get their permission to do that because they're giving you permission once they put their name and email address in. That's how they're giving you permission. Okay. So I know I just put a, spit a lot out there, but um, that's like, that's homework assignment number one. Like that's got to get done. Um, and, and that could take you a half hour. Like it's not going to take that long to do that. The yeah. other thing though is, is, and we can kind of end on this one. Cause this is, this is something like you can hit this thing like next week in, and you're probably going to see an influx of sales. Um, so Chris, anything you want to say on that before we move on to the last part of this? I think I, that homework assignment number one would be, let's get that domain, right? So like one, a one B would be, let's include that on Etsy, swap out the URL in the banner, swap out the URL in the listings for that new one. And it could just be nyapaperyvip.com. Yep. Right. Just make it a different one so that we can redirect it to whatever that opt-in page is going to be. And then we want to make the same offer to those people that we're making in the pop-up on the website. So if it's oh. save 10%, right, join the VIP list, whatever that offer is that we decide on, let's make that same offer to all those people and just set that pop-up to be the same thing as the, the landing page that we use so that we're capturing that. And if we want to test some different things, we can just swap those both out at the same time. And what that's going to do is it's not only going to increase the number of customers, but it's going to increase the number of people who have been to the website and opted in, even if they didn't purchase something. And we know just from general e-commerce rules that 67 to 70% of people abandon cart, right? Those are just the people who add things to the cart and then don't buy. That doesn't include everybody else that comes to the website. Right. right. We get to capture a big chunk of both of those groups of people when we create that offer. So we can create that inside of Etsy, direct them to the landing page, create that same offer in the pop up on the website and capture the people who aren't actively purchasing or are actively purchasing and just want to take advantage of that. That I do have sense of that. And that's actually driving me nuts because what, what is an, an add on on the website Okay. Uh, uh, named store view or something. And there are numbers. Uh, that well, pretty it's insane. Like they give you each day uh, the overview of like the numbers of cards, numbers of checkouts reached, and mm -hmm. then the number of orders. And um, it's pretty much uh, like. The numbers are really, really crazy, to be honest. And I, like, I'm wondering what's going on. For example, uh, on Tuesday, uh, there were uh, 17 cards, then eight checkout, and then three orders. I don't know if this is normal. Um, well, so that, or, that's what I was saying. The, the average is that yeah. when people add it to a cart, 70% of those people will abandon, right? Okay. So... What did you say? You had 17 carts. So 17 add to carts. Yes. And then three sales. And then three sales and eight checkouts, like eight people uh, off the 17 reached checkout. Like right. they put so that, that's, that's fairly average, right? Yep. Because we're saying out of those 17 people, 3% purchased, right? That is lower than where I would want to see it, right? That's 17%. Somebody correct me in the math mm -hmm. in the chat, right? Uh, I won't. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, typical. but we're, we're below that that 30% average. Yeah. But again, yeah. we're looking at a single day's worth of data there. When we're running promotions, that's going to be different. But yeah, the first step is get to a product page, right? So that's what's missing from that dashboard. How many people got to a product page and didn't add something to the cart? right? We lose all those people. If we don't capture their email, we lose those forever. Once somebody yeah. adds something to a cart, depending on how you have your email set up, 
And if you don't, please do turn on your abandoned carts, right? Yeah. Then at least we're getting people into that ecosystem. Now in most systems, something like Shopify, unless they're already like logged into a customer account, you can't even capture those emails until they get to the reached checkout stage. And if you look at the yeah. Shopify checkout, what is the very first thing that they have in the Shopify checkout is that email address, right? Because they wanna be able to send you those. So out of those 17 people who added something to the cart, you had the chance to capture only eight email addresses and then you made three sales. So if we got all eight of those and then sent them a follow-up email, we're gonna pick up more of those sales. If we're able to capture the email earlier on, even before they add something to the cart, which is the whole reason Scott and I are advocating for that pop-up, then we get, yeah. let's just say out of those 17 people, we have 50 that landed on that product page, which is not an unrealistic number, right? That's yeah. actually probably on the low side for some right. We're gonna get 10, 15 email addresses out of there between people signing up for the pop-up, people going in and, and adding something to the cart, right? So we're gonna be able to grow that list very, very quickly. And then every time we do a promotion, even if we were still just sending the one email, which please don't, and I know Scott's gonna go <laughs> right. on a rant about this here in just a second, but even if we were just sending that one email, we'd see higher and higher sales coming through that yep. because we have more people on the list. So the earlier we can capture them in that funnel, the better off we are. Yeah. And, you know, to, to some people watching, you know, this is definitely advanced. Like you're, you're on the advanced side because you started with the website and then you kind of bolted on the Etsy thing. Um, but the email is like, to me, like the driver to all of this. And uh, is the, there's two parts of it. We, we want to capture as much mm -hmm. as we can so we can send emails and we can drive people to the website or drive people to Etsy. Um, drive people from Instagram. So, you know, we're not having to do as much there to keep it up in the algorithm there, right? You got to remember like with email, it's not about an algorithm. It's about you sending and getting through the spam traps. And the way that we do email is it's all text-based. So we don't, we don't do graphics and trying to make it look all fancy, like a, like a brand would. Um, and that helps us get through the spam traps. But, um, anyway, lot that we can do here. And I think I don't want it to get overwhelming to you. I want it to be like very simple actually. And I want the first thing to be like Chris said, and the action step would be like getting that URL, you know, like, like you said, like with a VIP.com, add that into your banner, add that into your descriptions and make it a, a reason for someone to want to give you their email address, you know, sign up for our VIP list. Cause that's where you'll get, you know, discounts and you know, free offers, like whatever. Um, and then you're, you're, they're instantly going to get 20% off or whatever. That's like first. Second thing is, is we're sitting on this email list. I would like you to send minimum one email a week. And okay. that email could be, and we're not even talking promotion right now. I'm just saying email. And it could be, Hey guys, um, my husband just created this new product for a customer. And you know, um, I had no idea how it was going to turn out, but it came out amazing. And it's now something we're going to add to our product line. You can check it out here. And that's a link. And all you're doing is telling people what you're doing, right? And you're telling people, my husband works with me. We're a team. People love that, right? So this is a way for you to do that. Another way. Let's say you get a really good review, whether it's on Etsy, whether it's on your website. This just made my day. Smiley face. Hey guys, it's Nezreen. I just had to share this because I am so excited right now and so happy because one of my customers reached out and said that this gift made their mother cry. And oh my gosh, like that is just warm my heart, whatever. And, um, you know, and that's it. You're sharing a story from someone about a product that you created and letting people know that you're so appreciative of them. And oh, by the way, in the PS, if, if you, uh, if you've missed our new, uh, line of bookmarks, go check them out here. So it's literally just more touches. It's more touches. And I would rather you see you write an email than do an Instagram post. Be honest. Okay. Yeah. My focus would be like Instagram would be at, after I sat down for my morning coffee and I sent my email, then I'm like, mm, should I do something on Instagram today? Yeah, I'll do an Instagram post. Oh, I'll do a Facebook thing. Yeah, I'll do that. My order of operation is I sit down, I write email. That's my day. Why? Because it's the, it's got the most ROI on my time. Like not even just financially, 
but keeping that list engaged for when I do want to promote, it's there. And I'm delivering value along the way. You sharing a story of someone that uh, people like hearing good stories. People like hearing that you're doing things that are making people happy and that you're creating products with your husband. And, um, you know, you went on a trip and you found a new material that, uh, is going to be part of your product or you found a new supplier and you guys went and visited the, you know, the shop and you saw how it was made. Like you're sharing all that stuff. Like that's in an email. And then it's always PS. Um, if you haven't visited our shop in a while, you should go check it out. We've got a whole bunch of new stuff. You're going to get sales from that guaranteed. Um, Oh, but now let's just, and I mean, is there any questions on that? Uh, no, I no. don't think so. Not for now. At okay. Least. Okay. I, I didn't know I could do that actually. So I'm like a, a whole new world just open for me. <laughs> and that's fantastic. I'm so glad to hear it because I do think you're sitting on like a great opportunity and it's only going to get better. Um, so let's end with this. Okay. Um, what I would like to see you do, and I'm in this, this little four day, we call it our profit push. We've shared this with other e-commerce sellers. We did one as a case study, um, a couple years back and she sold t-shirts for $15 and 99 cents, somewhere 18 99. And, um, she had an email list of about 15,000, maybe 20,000 and, um, ran this and did over $19,000 in four days. Oh, from wow. sending six emails and those emails, um, were over a four day period. And if I, if my, if my memory serves me right, um, I think she didn't send the last email because she didn't want to email her list too much. And I was like, that's fine. It still did. Okay. But I, I would have sent out that last email. Um, but so here, here's what it looks like. And here would be the homework. Come up with a reason why you're going to do a promotion. Okay. Like whatever it is, just come up with the reason. Doesn't matter what it is. It could be like my husband and I just celebrated our anniversary and we want to celebrate with you. Um, you know, you know, it was just Memorial day. That could have been a reason, right? It, there, there's all different reasons. You just come up with whatever the reason is. You got to have a reason and it could be anything. Um, so that's the first thing. The second thing is, is okay. What is, um, what are, what is the product going to be? What is the discount going to be? Right. Mm -hmm. Um, what is the offer going to be? Um, cause it doesn't always have to be, a, it doesn't always have to be a discount either. If you, I mean, you're shipping this stuff yourself. So you could be like, buy one, get one free, buy one, um, and uh, buy one of these and we'll throw in our bookmarks, right. Okay. Or whatever it is, you know, you just have to come up with an offer that people are going to be like, Oh, this is something I should probably get on pretty quick. Um, so it's, you need a start date. So when's it going to start and yeah. when is it going to end? And so it's very easy, right? It's like, okay, I mean, I personally, and it depends on, on your niche. You could do them on the weekend, weekends work. Um, you could do it on a, it's like a weekend sale, um, or you can do it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. It doesn't really matter. The biggest thing is, is just setting the deadline and then working backwards to where, okay, we have to start it here. So pick the start time, pick the end time. And then from there, you're going to announce it into your email list. And it's going to be basically the subject line would be, surprise inside, like something like that. And then it's like, Hey, my husband and I were talking and we want to do something special for you, our loyal, uh, past customers. And, uh, we decided to do this thing. And then you share what the thing is and then say, so if you want to take advantage of this, it's going to be available for the next 48 hours, go here, like literally give them a call to action, go here. And that's the hyperlink. That's going to be the link that you would put in your email. And then you might put in there. If you have any questions, let us know. Um, we're going to be spending uh, time home this weekend, so I'll have plenty of time to answer them. Talk to you later, and then just sign off. Like that's the email. It's literally that. Then the next day, you're going to send another email, and the email is just going to be like, "Did you see this?" Question mark. Surprise. And then you're just going to say, "Hey, I just wanted to make sure you saw this. I sent this out. We announced it. I know you might be busy." but I just wanted to make sure that you had time to see this. We're doing this. And then you just copy and paste almost the same identical email. You don't even have to rewrite a whole nother email. Okay. You send that email out. And that's day two. Day three. Now we have a reason to email because it's going to be ending tomorrow. So the title of that, the subject line would be like ends tomorrow, <laughs> right? Like that's it. That's the subject line. 
Okay. Then inside it, you're like, Hey, it's Nazarene again. Um, you know, I know it's the weekend or whatever. Like, uh, you know, I know I emailed, you know, a couple times already this week, but I just wanted to make sure you saw this because it's going to be ending tomorrow. If you missed it, I'll copy it below. And then you just copy it below done. That's the third email. Then the fourth email or the fourth day would be one in the morning. Hey, got, you know, and that, that one there would be like either, um, ends tonight okay. deadline, you know, something like that. And then in that email, it's gonna be like, you know, Hey, it's Nazarene. I, I know you're probably busy, um, but I wanted to make sure that you saw this so you don't miss out. Um, if you were, um, you know, if you, if you saw this already, um, and then from there, you're just going to basically repeat what you're, what's happening. You're like, um, we decided to do this because my husband and I are celebrating this, whatever. And, uh, we just wanted to make sure that you saw that we're going to be giving 20% off of our complete bundle or package, whatever. Um, and it ends tonight. So I just wanted to give you, um, some time if you miss this, cause I know, you know, people are busy. They don't check their emails every single day, you know, and that's it. And then you sign off that's in the morning. And then maybe you only want to send two on the last day. I know it gets a little scary when you send more, but I would send more, but, um, I would say at the very minimum, I would send one then at around mid afternoon, like four or five o'clock. And then that one there would just be, um, you know, could, if, if it is your last email, then it would say final notice or, um, uh, a few hours left, something like that. And then in that email, it's just gonna be like, Hey, it's Nezreen. I know I emailed you a lot today right? You're going to, you call that out because you're thinking it and you're thinking if they think it, but if you admit that you've been doing it, they're like, oh, well, they know they've been emailing a lot, right? I'm not trying to hide. I'm not like, I'm not like, you know, like I, I'm not emailing you. I'm, I'm emailing you a lot because this is, this is ending. And I want to make sure you saw it because I know you're probably busy like I am. Um, so that's it. You just call it out in the very beginning. If you go back and search my name in your inbox, if you check your emails, if you see that, look at any promotion that I ran at the very end, it's going to say that at the last day in that email, I know I emailed you a lot, but it's re the reason why is this is ending and I want to make sure you saw it. So you don't miss out. That's it. And it covers yourself. And then you just tell them like, go here to get the special offer. Um, you know, thank you so much to everyone that already purchased say that because then it shows social proof that people are buying it. Okay. Um, and that's it. And then you wrap it up and you're done. And then there is one more thing I would do. Okay. And this is what I always do. I'd come back a couple days later and I would just deliver a value type email. Okay. And that one there could be thank you in the subject line. And then the thank you is, Hey, it's Nezreen. I just wanted to drop in and say how much I truly appreciate you as a customer. I'm, I'm not sure I've ever sent something telling you as much as I appreciate your business. I really, truly do. My husband and I, we get such joy out of creating these products and, and, and whatever, right? You just explain a little bit and then just say, thank you. And then if you, if you have any requests of any new products you'd like us to create in the future or any styles, let us know. We're always listening. Thank you so much. No links, no nothing. That's it. It's just okay. a value type of like, I'm just saying hi and I'm saying thank you. That's it. And that email will get a ton of, of opens too because everyone wants to know like, why are they thanking me? It's true, you know? So like all of this stuff that I'm sharing with you, I've shared with others too, um, but I've been doing this and Chris has been doing this. I've been doing it for almost 20 years and it pretty much stays the same. And and I'm not going to say this to brag, but I've done millions of dollars through email using what I just shared here. So use it. It works. Does it sound like something you could try? Can you test it? Yes. Yeah. And I will you report back to us and let us know how you did? Yeah, I will share the emails as well. Awesome. Yeah. And if you want to send, like, I don't do this often, but if you want to send me, send, you know, me and Chris, just, just uh, support at brandcreators.com. Just send over even like your first email or your second email or whatever. And you want us to kind of look it over. We'll do that just because I want this. Uh, I want this to happen for you. Thank you. Thank you. I will do that. I will find something and try because, well, that's. that's you're literally it. sitting on a gold mine. <laughs> there you are. So 
So thinking about this, Nesreen, right? If yeah. we got eighteen dollars per subscriber, you're at that hundred and twenty thousand dollars. Now, obviously, not everybody that's on that list is going to buy again. Right. But at your price point, we could get 600 people to buy again and be at that same number, right? Yeah. So as long as they're not all buying the magnetic bookmarks, then we set ourselves up for success, even if only a very small portion of those people buy over the course of the next year. And we can turn around and use this same exact strategy if we want to launch something on Etsy or we see that our volume starts to drop and we go and we look on Etsy and we say, hey, there's somebody else making bookmarks now. Yeah. Okay, cool. Let's send an email to the bookmarks over on Etsy and say, hey, uh, go check these out, right? That's all that you need to do. You're gonna send traffic and you're gonna get sales that way as well. So we can stabilize and grow Etsy, but also we can use that existing list to hit that $120,000 just by doing this strategy a few different times throughout the year. Yeah. Any questions before we send you off on your way into email greatness? Uh, I just have one. Sure. Um, I'm wondering if I should, uh, well, I'm working on it already, uh, but if I should expand uh, at least on Etsy because, well, uh, like the planner niche, uh, they already know me. So for just the people that would love like leather accessories, just to expand the offer and then have more, uh, I don't know, product that are not to a specific niche, but to, I, I won't say everybody because I do have like some colors that very feminine. Mm -hmm. So I still target the same, uh, maybe um, range of people. So mostly women and about mm -hmm. the same um, age. Sure. So between 20 uh, and up to, I don't know, 50, 60. Um, but other products like, I don't know, bags, belts, uh, I do that already for me, for my friends, but I never really uh, put them on on near their shop, to be honest. Mm. So I was wondering if that would be a good idea or not. What's your thoughts, Chris? If it's something that we see that has existing demand on Etsy, so you go in and you're like, hey, there's a lot of people buying leather belts. We have them sitting around in the shop anyway. I would put it on your website and I would put it on Etsy, right? Mm -hmm. And I would make sure those catalogs are synced so that if you upload something to your website, it's available on Etsy, right? Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with doing it as a test. And I think, Scott, you mentioned like an hour ago at this point, a really interesting strategy that can help us test this which is, hey, we created a new thing. Go check it out on Etsy, right? right. That's a reason to email this week. Uh, it's something we've never tried before. Uh, somebody asked me to make it, right? My friend Susie asked me to make uh, th this really cool belt and I thought you might be interested in it. Go check it out. Yeah. And if you make some sales from it, then you make some sales from it, right? All it did was cost you the, the 20 cents. It cost you a couple a couple minutes to take the, the photos and get it uploaded. But if you're going to put it on your site anyway, you're already doing that. So that is a great way to test products. By default, I would say, let's see if there's demand for it inside of the Etsy ecosystem, yeah. right? Like the magnetic bookmarks, there's a lot of room for us to grow there. We can 10x what you're making there just based on what, what we were looking at earlier. But if we have the other products, they're already sitting around. If there is demand, that's a potential gold mine because all we have to do is go to the work of listing. If there's okay. not existing demand, it doesn't mean that we can't create some demand because there are people buying leather belts, sure. right? There are people buying other things on Etsy, but we don't have to just rely on that because you have the email list. We can drive the traffic over there. And if we make five, 10, 15 sales, awesome. If it never sells again, was it worth the effort to put it up and, mm -hmm. and spend five minutes to create the email? More than likely, right? Because you were already taking the pictures and doing all that stuff anyway. So put it up and, and drive the email list over there and just say, hey, go check this out. It's something my friend asked me to put together. And I thought you might be interested in it as well. And they'll go over. And if they are actually interested in that type of product, they'll show you that with their clicks and their dollars. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I guess I'll just leave you with this. Um, I just wouldn't want it to take away from the focus of the current brand. Like, okay. is there still opportunity to build out more stuff around the planner stuff? Um, you know, could you pull in from like 
a wedding planner, like someone had just said in the comments about like the wedding niche, like instead of it going after product specific, go after a niche. And, and if you went after like wedding, could you incorporate like a wedding planner, um, you know, or a wedding planner accessory or a wedding, you know, different things there to go around the planner. Cause that's where you're at. That, and, yes. Yes. You know, I could that be, and I actually did it for uh, uh, my friend's wedding. We we did yes. table, uh, we did personalized bookmarks. Uh, we did a lot of things with leather. Uh, Those would I be putting up? Okay, okay. That's a that's a no brainer because it, okay. it's it's in your wheelhouse. It's still in planner or, uh, you know, it's, it's bookmarks. It's still in, but it's now we're catering to a, a completely different niche that of someone that's just like, I just want to get a nice, nice leather, uh, you know, a bookmark thing for my, when I'm journaling or when I, whatever, right? Like you could totally do that. Um, so that's a no brainer, like wedding, you're just bolting on to your existing thing. Okay. And yeah. it's a big market. That was actually wedding, um, uh, the Right, and the groom offered to all of the people that were there. Yeah, and uh, with uh, like we we also made kitchen with uh, she and him and yeah, lost. There together. you go, done. Stuff like that. I would yeah. be putting those on for sure. Oh, okay. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. And and I'd let your list know that you're putting them on. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you've got so many reasons to um to do that. I you, you might start getting some emails from me. Uh, privately just nudging you. I'm going to be like, Hey, did you send your email this week? Did you send your email this week? Right. When I'm sending mine, I'm going to think of you now for the next week. I'm going to be like, I wonder if she's writing her email, you know, <laughs> cause I'm telling you, I mean, think of, I mean, every time that you send email, you'll generally probably pick up some sales, even if you don't actively push, but if you do a push, like we talked about, you'll definitely get sales. Yeah. Without a doubt. Yeah, I do. Every time I send a newsletter, I have sales, but I just do it once a month and yeah. that's clearly yeah. not enough. All right. We're, we, we are definitely going to fix that. All right, cool. So you've Thank got you. homework. I know yeah. it seems like a lot. Take a deep breath, take a, take a relaxed moment. And then, um, and then just start, you know, like I said, with some of the things that we talked about, but email is the focus for you. And I think that's going to really ex explode things for you. So thank you so much for coming on. And, uh, we are going to be doing an update with you for sure. Okay. Okay. With pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for all the awesome advice. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. So that's a wrap for this Etsy shop audit. But if you want to watch more, well, you can find some more right here. And if you do, well, I'll see you there.